Did you know that about two thirds of all display advertising video and static is programmatic, uh, which basically means that it's automatic. It's done by algorithms. It just picks where to place ads for brands and who to show them to. And most of that programmatic, uh, really all that programmatic is based on third party cookies. In 2023, Google announced that it will do away with third party cookies. And uh, App Apple Safari, Mozilla's Firefox have already done away with third party cookies. Are those little things that track your movements and your uh, interests and your actions all over the internet. And then it takes that data, compiles it together and sells it off to the highest bidder so that us advertisers can all target you. So when you go and you visit Amazon, you look at a pair of shoes or Zappos and you look at a pair of shoes and then that pair of shoes follows you around the internet for the next 30 days, that's all because of cookies. So what happens to the advertising world when third party cookies go away? That's exactly what we're gonna talk about in this video. Hey everyone, I'm John Timmerman, CEO of Good Monster and chairman of Good Brands and Management. We own companies like GFX, uh, Good Growth, which are consulting and AR, VR companies. Basically anything to do with e-commerce, that's the world I live in. So if you're into that kind of thing, make sure you subscribe to my channel. So today we're talking third-party cookies. You have by now heard that third-party cookies are going away and maybe some of you are already trying to figure out what to do next and it's going to impact the advertising world for sure the digital advertising world because retargeting programmatic ad buying even social media targeting it's all based on third-party cookies for the most part so when they go away what are we going to do well there's a very simple answer to this it's uh, not easy work to do, it's hard work to do, but there's a very simple answer, which I'll get to in a moment. But let's first look at what is going to actually happen to some different types of advertising. So thousands of brands have been built on third-party cookies. So when we saw social media rise, actually before that, when we saw pay-per-click Google ads rise, we saw businesses literally being built on the back of Google ads. We saw businesses literally being built on the back of Facebook ads. And they became huge. So, uh, uh, brands like uh, MVMT, the watch company I've mentioned, um, Warby Parker and Bonobos, you know, all of these brands were digitally native brands built on things like influencer marketing and Facebook ads and, and uh, uh, different types of digital advertising. The ability to target people for individual personal information, like how much money they make annually, what's their net worth, uh, what's, are they likely to move or not, are they likely to have a baby or not. Third-party cookies have gotten increasingly um, uh, deep into our personal lives over the past several years, and this caused a lot of concerns. As the internet's evolved, social media's evolved, 5G is now here, and things get, keep getting faster and easier, our privacy is at greater risk. We've lived over 20 years of having our lives on the internet, which means all of that data is being compiled and up until recently being sold off to the highest bidder. So now social media platforms, digital platforms like Google and Facebook are being forced to sort of suppress that privacy issue, hence getting rid of third-party cookies. It just means that our information is not going to be sold out automatically to the highest bidder so that we can be targeted for things. That does not mean that advertising is going away or that our information is still not going to be tracked and stored. It will, and it will never go away, but it will be different. Things like first party cookies will take over. So first party cookies is basically you visit my website, I collect information on you, I keep it for my own use the next time you come to my website, okay? It's the same as if you walked into a store and that you were on camera and your movements were tracked as you go throughout that store and when you leave, the footage of you in there still stays in there and that's owned by the business. That's what a first party cookie does. Uh, there's, there's no automatic sort of technical second party cookie, but a second party cookie is essentially when a first party, like a website, takes that information and uses it to do a campaign with another affiliated business, right? They're not selling it off to another business, um, but they're you know, using that information to do a joint venture or 
or something like that, right? Uh, example of a second party cookie is if you are a vendor, uh, I'm sorry, an attendee at an event, you sign up, uh, you buy a ticket for an event, right? And then that event gives that information to a vendor that's going to be at that event so that they can use that information to better serve you. That's, that's sort of a second party cookie. So with third party cookies go away, uh, this individual targeting goes away, goes away from a network perspective, okay? So the individual targeting won't be able to be collected or the individual information won't be able to be collected by a first party and then sold to a bunch of third parties, okay? So that will change programmatic ad buying specifically because programmatic is based on these detailed pieces of information so that the program can decide what ads to show you based on the likelihood that you have a net worth of $200,000 or an income of $200,000 and a net worth of a million dollars and you're likely to move to San Francisco in a year and have two kids. Uh, it, it can't, it won't be able to do this anymore. Okay. So programmatic is going to be much more broad. And that's one general thing that will happen with third-party cookies going away is that programmatic, which is still growing, by the way, I think in 2022 uh, already, there's something like it's projected to be $64 billion spent on programmatic ad buying, I think in, in the US alone. So it's not going to go away. And it's even increasing because of over-the-top OTT um, advertising platforms, Hulu, YouTube TV. These are all replacing traditional TV and there's still ads on there. So now these ads are going from techcrunch.com and they're following you up onto NBC when you watch it on YouTube TV, right? But instead of tracking you, it's going to track people that are sort of like you. And these are co cohorts of people that all uh, have, the, have a similar interest um, and, and this information will come from information that you voluntarily give to companies and it's not sold from company to company. It's collected based on, you know, your, when you sign up for YouTube, you put your interest in, you sign up for YouTube TV and you say, my interests are finance, business, and comedy. Well, you will be advertised based on the finance, the, the business and the comedy inputs that you put in. And that will follow you around Google properties because Google owns YouTube. Same thing over on Facebook. When you sign up for Facebook, you put your interests in, you put your location in, where do you live? You put that information in. And then therefore, Facebook can target you uh, or the vendors, the businesses that had run Facebook ads can target you because you put that information into Facebook. What they will do then, Facebook will group together people with similar interests in similar locations or geographical locations, and it will then target ads based on that. Okay. Now Facebook actually was a bad example because I'll tell you why in a minute, but because Facebook collects information on you based on all the things you post and the links you share and the comments you make, but remember they can do that. They're a first party. You're voluntarily putting that information on Facebook. So it will then use that information to do detailed targeting for all of the businesses that run ads on Facebook, Instagram, and any other properties that it buys in the future. Right? So that wasn't necessarily a great example because they will still do detailed targeting, but it's not based on third parties. So the, those, those businesses that are advertising to you on Facebook, they won't be able to use that information and follow you on other platforms, not inside Facebook's ecosystem. The, the other platforms, the programmatic ad buying platforms, they will use these cohorts of people that are grouped together based on information that is voluntarily given. So uh, it's basically reverting back to where we were pre-internet. Companies would run a TV ad on, uh, you know, CNN because they were like, well, somebody watching CNN is looking for the news. If somebody's looking for the news, they probably care about the world and what's happening. If they probably care about the world and what's happening, they probably have a job. If that's what they're worried about, they probably have a job. And, you know, here's the demographic that CNN has as a, as their viewer. And so that's what we're targeting on. It will go back to that sort of general brand targeting based on who is in that cohort, uh, of, of people. 
Google is actually naming this. It's called Flock. It's called the Federated something cohort. <laughs> I don't know. It's new. They're they're coming out with it next year. Uh, but it's it, it's the same thing. They're going to be grouping together people based on information that they're collecting in their different products like YouTube and Gmail and Google Workspace. They will group people together, not individuals. You, they won't, you know, you won't be able to see an individual and all of their individual traits. Instead, there will be a group. This is the data that they will collect and they will put it into a group. And then that group will say, this group is full of people that are interested in finance. They have an income of a hundred to two hundred thousand dollars a year, and uh, you know they're generally interested in business and growth and things like that. Okay. And then the ads will be targeted to those cohorts. So this is how advertising will sort of shift. Now, there's other things coming down the pipeline. This is still very new. And I'm sure over the next decade, brands, platforms will figure it out to get some level of targeting. But the, the, the basis here is that the days of individually targeting somebody based on their personal actions and interests and being able to do that across the entire internet are going away. I don't know if they'll come back or not, but right now they're going away. So what does this mean for a brand? I'll tell you very simply what this means. And it's the same thing I talk about in every single video that I do, is you need to focus on growing your brand. You need to put out content that is valuable and useful and rememberable <laughs> uh, because that is the best way to avoid any of these changes. If Facebook gets broken up from, for, for, uh, by antitrust laws, if Amazon gets broken up by antitrust laws, if TikTok gets banned in the United States, if any of these things happen, which have, you know, scares have happened and been in the news and things like that, that won't matter if you've got a great brand because people then will go and seek you out. The content piece, though, is where I want to focus on. That's the most important thing you can do is to create content. Create content that is valuable and discoverable, and then utilize channels like influencer marketing, affiliate marketing, joint ventures, sponsored content on websites that you know uh, have the audience that you want. Doing things like that will grow your brand and will get people to pay attention to you because it's natural, it's organic, and it's, uh, it's giving valuable information per your content to an audience that is engaged by it, right? Advertising wise, you can still do great marketing through lookalike audiences. Uh, lookalike audiences are essentially, you take your customer information that you have from previous customers. You should have that in your Shopify or whatever website you're using. You take that information and you can load that, the, the actual email addresses into Facebook to, do, to target people that are part of the cohorts, part of the groups of other people that look alike, those people, right? So you're using your own first party data, your own customer data, you're loading it into platforms that have their own data on their own customers. And it's basically taking, here's all the email addresses of the people that I wanna target, or I'm sorry, that are previous customers, put it into Facebook. Facebook looks at all the information that it has on all of those customers, because it's not selling or giving it any information to anybody. You're basically saying these are already customers. You load that in there and then Facebook says, okay, here's all of the traits I know about all of these people. I'm going to put them, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to put those traits into the different buckets and categories and cohorts of other people. And then I'm going to recommend that we show your ads to these buckets and cohorts based on your previous customers. Okay. And so then you can go and show it ad. Uh, to a, a a type of person that is most likely to become a customer because it looks like your current customers. That will still be very possible and very valuable. In addition to that, as I mentioned, you can still do great tar targeting based on the type of person, okay? And you can do this after testing your content on your own social media or your own email uh, uh, channels, okay? So you cannot get around the fact that you need to create content. That is the that is the lesson here is create great content because the future of your business online depends on it. It's a noisy world and because we're going to lose the individual targeting, that removes that ability for us to sort of target somebody individual 
and try to encourage them to make to take an action with an ad. Instead, it's going to become about the brand and the content and the emotional response somebody has uh, to you know your video or or your product, uh, and trying to woo them into going and discovering you wherever you are. So when you remove the third party cookies, you're going to lose the individual targeting. But this is a good thing, people. This is a really good thing because it's going to force all of us as brands and marketers and founders and owners and growers to focus more on our customer, to focus more on data collection on our own properties, and to focus on great content that encourages people to engage and share. That's the future of marketing. That's the future of advertising because the greatest pieces of content that you create you can then go and run as an ad to a particular cohort, to a particular group, or you can go run that on a specific website that has shown you, because they collect their own data, that they have your ideal customer. So don't worry, third-party cookies are going away, but all is gonna be good. If you wanna learn a little bit more details about this process and what's gonna happen and what you can do, head over to my blog, jtimmerman.com, J, the letter J, timmerman.com and uh, just Google search third, uh, sorry, search on the website, third party cookies and the, the blog post will come up. You can read all about it over there. And if you found this content valuable, you like e-commerce and commerce and digital marketing and uh, everything marketing and management, uh, subscribe to this channel. That's all I talk about all day long. And I have a new business called GFX where we talk about, uh, I'm sorry, we build AR and VR tools for brands and governments and museums. So I'll be talking a lot about AR, augmented reality, virtual reality, and how it plugs and plays into our business environment into the future. So if you're into that too, subscribe. I'll see you next time.